Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about managing your diabetes while you're on the trail. I wanted to share about how I've done it in the past and how I'm continuing to learn how to do it. Currently I use a zero insulin strategy. That means that when I'm actually hiking on the trail, I have my pump insulin line disconnected and suspending the delivery of insulin. Now, the reason I do this is because I've learned that with my body, exercise acts as the basal that I need. So when I unplug that and I'm exercising, all I'm really doing is having to think about counteracting any lows that I have. So just to explain how I do this in a day, I thought I would just go from morning to night as if I were on a trip backpacking and explain the steps that I will take throughout the day to try to stabilize my blood sugars and stay in range. In the morning, the first thing I'm gonna do is eat breakfast. With any meal while I'm out on the trail, whether that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I'm not gonna be taking the full amount of insulin that I would take if I were here at home. When I'm out there on the trail, I'm doing so much exercise that my body is burning through all those nutrients and all that glucose a lot quicker and a lot more. And so I don't need the insulin to do quite as much as it usually does for me when I'm at home being a little more lethargic. I don't have an exact ratio for when I'm on the trail. At home, I'm a 10 to one ratio, so I take one unit of insulin for every 10 carbs. But on the trail, I don't have a calculated ratio. I just take the carbs that are in the meal and I subtract 10 or 15 carbs from that, and I take the insulin I need for those carbs. And the reason I don't take the full amount of insulin for my meals is because I know that after breakfast, I'm gonna be hitting the trail and my body is gonna be burning through a lot of that. And that exercise is really going to fill in where that insulin is lacking. So once I'm ready to hit the trail and I'm in range with my blood sugars, I'm actually going to unplug the tubing from my site and I'm gonna suspend the delivery on my pump. And from that point on, exercise is actually going to be my basal. And all I'm gonna do is manage any kind of lows that I have. So as I'm hiking, I'm observing my numbers. I'm looking for any downward momentum. Now with lows, there are two ways that I counteract them. If it's a low momentum drop in my blood sugars, say if it's going from 130 to 120 and that takes 10 minutes, then I'm only gonna use glucose tablets because glucose tablets, they do counteract lows, but it's not strong. It's not going to shoot my blood sugars up. If it's a high momentum drop in my blood sugars, if I see it going from 130 to 105 minutes, then I'm gonna take out a protein bar and I'm gonna use that because that has richer carbs that are going to counteract that momentum a lot better than glucose tablets. And if I don't see a whole lot of movement, I'm going to be snacking little by little throughout the day. What I mean by that is I'm gonna take a protein bar and instead of eating the whole thing at once and having to take insulin for that, I'm going to break it up over an hour or even two hours. That way I'm not taking insulin and it's creating sort of a floor for my blood sugar so that it can't drop below that floor into the low range. Of course, if I see my blood sugar is going high, I will plug my insulin back in and resume my basal delivery. An example would be if I'm going down the mountain that's not as much exercise and energy as going up the mountain. And a lot of the time, if I'm going down a mountain, I will have my insulin plugged in. But if I'm going up a mountain and I'm using a whole lot of energy, I do not have my insulin plugged in. I have it unplugged and suspended. And that energy being burned and the, that exercise is acting as the basal for me. When it's time for lunch, I'll sit down and plug my insulin back in. That's because I'm going to be resting, and if I don't plug that back in, I will start seeing my blood sugars rise. So I plug it back in, and I eat lunch. Again, with lunch, I'm undershooting on the insulin, because I know that right after lunch, we're going to be right back to hiking and burning all that nutrients. So again, the exercise is going to fill in where the insulin is lacking. After lunch, I'm just observing my blood sugars. I'm making sure I'm not having a low. If I see downward momentum, again, I'm either taking a glucose tablet or I'm just relying on my continuous snacking to create that, that floor that my blood sugar can't go below. If I see it rising, of course, I'll put my insulin back in and resume my basal delivery. If it's a steep rise 
and I think I may have undershot for my lunch, then I can take a correction dose. But it's good to observe where you are in the hike. If I'm gonna be ascending steeply, I may not take that correction dose because as soon as we start ascending, all that energy is going to correct the blood sugar naturally without insulin. And so just pay attention to where you are on the trail. If you see it rising and you think you need to correct and you're descending, take the correction. If you're about to ascend, I would recommend seeing what that does when you start ascending. Does it naturally correct your blood sugar or not? And then finally, once I get to camp, I'm going to plug back in if I'm not already plugged in and I'm going to resume the delivery of my basal. The next tricky part is going to be dinner. Dinner is very hefty. Typically backpacking dinners have 80 to 150 carbs in one meal. But again, I'm not going to take all of that insulin. Not like I typically would here at home. I'm gonna aim lower, whether that's by 10, 15 or 20 carbs. That's kind of up to where my blood sugar currently is. If I'm in range, I'll go for 20 carbs short of what I would usually take. If I'm high, I have to figure that out, but I'm just gonna try not to overshoot on my insulin. As soon as you overshoot, you're dealing with lows after dinner or even in your sleep. That can be difficult because you're technically not supposed to keep scented items in your tent, especially if you're in bear country because that can be dangerous. They have a great sense of smell and there have been stories where people have bears try to get inside of their tent. However, as a type 1 diabetic, we obviously have to be prepared for lows in our sleep. And so I do keep a little bag of a few glucose tablets in my tent just to be prepared in case I have a low. It would be a lot easier just to pop a few of those and seal that back up rather than getting out of my tent, pulling down my bear bag and trying to fetch some food. So that is basically how I manage my blood sugars in a day of backpacking. In summary, if I'm in range, while I'm hiking, I'm unplugged and my basal is suspended. For meals, I take less insulin than I would normally take. And while I'm snacking, I try to spread those snacks out over a few hours instead of eating them all at once. That keeps me from taking insulin and it creates a floor that my blood sugars can't drop below. If I see my blood sugars moving downward at low momentum, I'm gonna use glucose tablets. If I see it moving at a high momentum, then I'm gonna use something like a protein bar that has those strong carbs that can counteract that very effectively. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll try to respond to those. Actually, next week I'll be going to Colorado for a backpacking trip. And so keep your eyes open for the content that I'll be making for that. I hope to release that a few weeks after I finish the trip. All right, thanks for watching. See you later.